Greetings, consciousness. Welcome back. So in this podcast, we are talking about the ten plagues. The ten plagues in the Bible. And so um, we are going to start with John chapter 1 and verse 5. John the first chapter and the fifth verse. Very important that you understand these things. Because in this chapter you are told the light shines in darkness and darkness has overcome it not. The light shines in darkness but darkness overcome it not. What is our understanding of this? Because the average person will automatically point to a man called Jesus. Now I have recently introduced to you the representation of the cross in the Bible so you should understand the four elements which is matter. And so when the light shines in darkness but darkness overcomes the light not. Meaning the light is in you but the flesh being darkness, matter, cannot overcome the light. That's what this is talking about. Because in creation, the light came into matter. But the light, which is eternal, cannot die. The body, which is matter, will die. Therefore, the light will always shine, will always overcome darkness. You see, those of you who have um, seen a so, uh, solar eclipse, when the moon covers the light, right? We refer to that as solar eclipse. Now, when the moon covers the light, around the moon you see light shining. This is called corona. Corona. And this corona simply means crown, crown. And so you know who the king is. Now in some of the mythologies, the ancient world, they used to lament when this happens because they said the dragon had eaten or destroyed the sun. And since they knew the sun was a life, a life giver, people used to lament because of the covering of the light. They refer to this as a dragon eating the sun. And so now that you understand this thing called Corona around the solar eclipse, you now understand why when Jesus symbolically was crucified on the cross, which is the four elements, there was a crown of thorns put on his head. This crown represents the king in heaven. That is the corona. You see, some also refer to it as the rays of the light. And so astrologically, darkness covers the light, but darkness could not overcome the light. That is astrologically or astronomically speaking. You see, isn't it interesting how all these spheres, planets, including the earth even, are all round in shape. There's no square planet or star in the universe. And so we have to understand there is a supreme force that created all these things. It's amazing. But most people don't pay attention to these type of stuff, you see. Only those who contemplate and reflect on creation you know, lift up their heads and peep into the heavens. But like I was saying, light in darkness, but darkness overcomes light not. We are talking about your soul, which is born in the flesh, but the flesh cannot overcome it. Because the, the finite 
and the infinite have come together but the finite is only temporal the infinite is eternal you see so that is the whole purpose of the crucifixion where you have the four elements which obviously indicates to you that when you crucify the flesh which is basically ascending the four elements earth water air and fire because your spirit is the light and mind is god because you are all imagination all creation is imagination and so you hear about the holographic universe it is very important that you understand these type of stuff you see because i have spent many time many hours many days talking about this type of stuff with you now when you go to john the second chapter and the 19th verse john chapter 2 and the 19th verse there's a story there where Jesus allegedly has gone into a temple where people are selling stuff and he got pissed off and decided to drive them out and during the stories you know we're told that people came to him and asked him to give him a sign where he talked about destroy the temple and I'll raise it in three days and the people were amused by this and said it took 46 years to build this temple what the heck is this man talking about rebuilding it or raising it in three days now three days is symbolic it just means resurrection that is what that number represents but I, this is what I want to tell you about this little story 46 years we're not talking about literal 46 years all these things in the Bible are dark sayings as I've said previously therefore we have to understand when you write 46 and you put plus in the middle what you get is 10 okay the symbolic meaning of this 10 is very crucial you see in a Kabbalistic tradition this 10 sephirot has 10 spheres on it really 11 but the top one which is what I put here for you the very top one is Keter which means the spirit world and so this whole tree of life is telling you how creation is where spirit comes into matter the bottom one here is the earth but you have 11 rather, rather than 10 because the spirit world doesn't count this is how you came into matter and so you have your left with 10 spheres now if you remove the bottom one also which is when you are born into matter that is f you become form now so spirit has now become form in between you have nine now when a woman is pregnant they say you carry the child for nine months you see and so all these things has a meaning but the tree of life is all about how you came from the spirit world into where you are now that you have fallen in love with and cannot get enough of it and in doing so you can never free yourself to go back to where you came from that is why you have reincarnation the cycle will keep going on and on and on and on in our kinetic teachings until we decide that we've had enough in the bible we have the, the prodigal son same thing from Kemet. But here's the thing. If you go into your Bible in the Exodus story, you are told 
that there was 10 plagues in Egypt. These are the 10 spheres of creation. Our spirit came into bondage. And so they performed 10 miracles, all these 10 plagues in Kemet, to set the soul free. This is all about yourself ascending through the spheres. And so the 10 plagues in Kemet is symbolic. Just as you're looking at all these spheres. And what they really represent is planets. Planets. We have the seven main planets. But then you have others, which is further. You see? And so the highest mean, the top one, Keta, is the spirit world. The bottom one is Earth. When you remove those two, then you have nine. This nine months of gestation. And so you cannot read the Bible literally, as I keep telling people. And those of you, when you read the Bible, it's telling you, as we just talked about, Jesus driving out money changes in the temple. How many of you have stood in your temple where you've been sold oil, handkerchief, perhaps t-shirts? You've read this in the Bible where Jesus in the temple, where is the temple though? It's here. The temple, as I said to you, is supposed to be the garden of Eden where you are supposed to get rid of all the weeds and the thorns. So the place is kept clean. This is all about internal alchemy. That's why Jesus is upset driving because the light gives you, raises your consciousness. The king, Amon Ra, in the heavens, raises your consciousness through the light. We come to understand. Without the light, we are in darkness. If you put a person in darkness for one year, they lose their mind. If the sun disappears for 24 minutes, you will see the panic in the earth. People will be lost, like ants, losing their way, running around, bumping into each other. Where are you going to go? Where are you going to run to? Nowhere. At that moment, you will have to sit still because there's nowhere to run to. And so be still and know that I am God. In your meditations, your eyes are closed, but you find you expand beyond the physical body because you are awareness, you are consciousness, you see? And so I want you to understand how light came into darkness, but darkness could not overcome the light. It is very important that you know who you are because those who have opened churches don't have a clue what they are teaching, what they are preaching, shall I say, because there's nobody teaching. It's all about preaching. They have mistaken these dark sayings to be literal. And that's why I give you my time. And how much has it cost you? I have not sold you one handkerchief, one oil. No, nothing. Nor have I collected money from you to put in my pocket. But because I understand creation and I know who I am, I know who you are also. And so for me, giving you this knowledge, for me, is I'm doing it for myself as consciousness. It's plain and simple. And so with this said, I'm going to leave this video and I hope you understand. Peace.